Convergence Finance is a project I've held to a very high regard. Their promising features made me extremely passionate about their project and is probably the reason why I believe it would eventually sit inside the top 100. Well guys, it's been 12 months since I made my first video on Convergence, so let's see how it's doing. Welcome back to a new video everyone. My name is Kyron from NoBS Crypto, and if you're new around here, I would like to say welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, I would like to say thank you for returning. As you should all know, my goal with this channel is to provide you with no BS crypto content on a weekly basis. Now, this is gonna be a little series I'll be doing now that I believe we're in a bear market. That assesses the project I reviewed around 12 or so months ago, observing where they are now compared to where they once were. I'm gonna go through important changes as to why or why not I remain bullish on them in the long term. So I think the best place to start is where I began my first video and that's on coin market cap. I must say it is a little bit weird coming back here and checking out everything again one year later or more or less one year later. So, I mean, the first thing we can see right off the bat is the price and the market cap difference. I mean, it's huge. It doesn't look like much. I made the video, that first video around about here, the 23rd of May, 2021. And I mean, ratio wise, it doesn't look too bad, but I'm telling you right now, that difference is pretty substantial. So uh, the market cap, if you take a look at the video from back then, it was about $26 million with a 24 hour trading volume of what looks to be about $8 million and the price at about four cents. Now, I mean, <laughs> coming back here, we're, we're almost, I mean, we're very, very close to 100X difference there. Um, and of course the market cap is, you know, more or less 20X, 20X difference. And the volume is again, substantially different as well. The market cap and trading volume surprisingly have stayed within a somewhat decent ratio. Uh, but again, that's not really anything to be happy about when you're looking at a project that has potential to, to fade into nothingness, okay? So uh, again, I made that video about 23rd of May, and more or less this sort of chart here from what I've seen with Bitcoin has followed. Now, as we all know, alts do tend to follow Bitcoin's patterns, and that's obviously uh, the same with convergence as well. So the 23rd of May was more, more or less back down at the, at the bottom of the dip here. So convergence did pretty much launch at the top of what we, kind of thought was the market, okay? So terrible timing, terrible, terrible timing. And this is something I'm gonna go over in the video as well. We've gotta really be careful of projects that actually launch at the top or near the top of a bull market, okay? Because there's only one way you can really go from there. And that's one of the things I've learned from this, okay? So of course we did see a bit of an increase in price back up here to more or less the price where I thought it was a good point to buy at. And uh, that was obviously when Bitcoin jumped up to uh, almost 70K and then came back down to where we are now. So um, that is one indication of where we once were uh, compared to where we are now. And one other thing I wanted to check is the socials, okay? So, so Convergence had around about 44,000 uh, followers on Twitter back then, and it now has 72,000 members. So it has gone up, which is what you would expect with a year of trading. So that's that's something uh, we kind of should be using to indicate how it's all going, but more or less, I believe we should be looking at uh, engagement. Engage engagement is more important to me than followers, okay? Because you could have half, of the, half the amount of followers as convergence, but double or triple the amount of engagement, which tells me more people are interested. But regardless, it has increased more or less double um, in the Twitter following. Now the Telegram. Telegram is always something I need to look at or like to look at compared to the Twitter following because this tells me the pretty much the amount of true followers the the, the real followers a project has uh, because they will tend to follow them in the Telegram and stay engaged and communicate and chat and so on and so forth. And uh, as we can see here, there was about 48,000 members currently in the, in the chat. Now they're at the time of recording that previous video, I think there was about 72,200 members, okay? So it's dropped half which tells me the interest is more or less dropped with that as well. So I, I would take the Telegram over the, the Twitter. And if I'm gonna assess the Twitter, it would be the engagement, which of course, if we have a look down here, it's not it's not too fancy at all. And when, and when they do post, it's, um, I mean, very old news. I'm, we're currently at the 30th of May and they haven't really posted too much. So that's telling me things aren't looking too exciting for Convergence and the team knows it. So all in all, the price of Convergence has dropped quite significantly since I made my first video at just under four cents. It's dropped around 44X from that initial dip. And if we're talking from all time highs here, it's plummeted around 211X. So guys, at first glance, many of you are probably thinking one of two things, either 
Yes, this is a fantastic dollar cost average opportunity or this is well and truly dead. But if you're asking me, you shouldn't be basing your opinions on upward or downward price trends of any sort of project. You can take Luna for a prime example here. You know, on the chart, the project looked fantastic and strong, but it's the fundamental analysis that can provide us the answers we need. And unfortunately, in the case of convergence, the fundamentals tell me everything I need to know. You see, back at the time I made that first video, Convergence Finance was marketing itself as a decentralized interchangeable token protocol and the first AMM to make private assets interchangeable in the DeFi space by tokenizing them. So you guess you could say the claim to fame was the fact that they could take something like a Tesla stock and turn it into a security token to make it, of course, tradable in DeFi. But not only stocks, Convergence actually proposed a way that we could wrap anything from a house to an exotic car. There was literally going to be a way that we could tokenize real world assets and turn them into security token, which would, of course, unlock more potential in DeFi. Hence the name Convergence and their slogan, Converge the World. Now, in theory, we had a way we could use these security tokens that represented something like your house and then wrap them for things like loans and a lending protocol such as Centrifuge. Now, it's a pretty revolutionary step, albeit it is difficult, but it's definitely possible with time. Couple this with a great idea and the fact that it had some of the best investors like Divergence, Hashed, Alameda, GBV, CMS, Kinetic, and NGC. You'd actually be crazy not to be bullish, and this was pretty much the reason why I made my video on them. However, it goes without saying that there are still many, many issues with this new and evolving sector that they had to face, which was originally stated on their homepage. It's the issue we face with any AMM, and that's low liquidity. Not to mention what I alluded to earlier, which was the huge amount of issues that would spawn from such a feat. You've got to remember guys, Convergence was ahead of its time around 12 to 18 months ago, which was why it gained lots of attention really, really quickly. They were still developing, but the ideas were definitely there. Now their Twitter following had around 44,000 followers and their Telegram was huge with around 74,000 members, something you just don't see every single day in larger projects as well. So the ingenuity was there, the dream was most definitely there and the backing was there, not to mention the community as well. So. What do I actually think of Convergence now? Actually, I think the better question might be, where did it all go wrong? Now listen, I hate being the person that has to be the bearer of bad news, but I guess being objective on this channel is kind of the point. So with that out of the way, let's begin. To start, there's already a huge issue with Convergence's product. Convergence is saying that it's engaging in the sale and offering of security tokens. But why is that bad, you might be asking. Well, this is exactly what the SEC is cracking down on. So the Securities and Exchange Commission is a US government oversight agency that is responsible for regulating the securities markets and protecting investors. They sound like the good guys and perhaps in many situations they are, but if you've been in the space for long enough, you'll know why being regulated is harmful, but that's obviously beyond the scope of this video. Being a security token or offering the sale of security tokens will land you in the lap of the SEC and eventually require that you are regulated under the laws. Either you comply, or you're pretty much shut down. Now, both are obviously equally as consequential in crypto. But if you're one of the few that decide to move away from the US markets, expect growth to be limited and exchanges to literally delist you. So if you haven't put two and two together already, this essentially was the catalyst that drove Convergence's USP to the ground. Once they realized the SEC was gearing up to take on the crypto markets, they faced a daunting crossroad between changing the protocol selling point or shutting it all down. So this lands us to where we are today. A protocol that has changed paths to become unregulated by the SEC, or I guess at least under their radar. Now they've actually removed the word security from their white paper and website and completely changed their UX and UI. Now I actually suggest you go back and take a look at my first video to gauges for yourself. The differences are actually crazy. Just of course, bear with me through my monotone voice. It was actually one of my very first videos. They've actually changed their slogan to democratize investment by making private markets public, which more or less is still aligned with the previous, except rather than focusing on real world or equity markets, they're solely dependent on crypto markets. To give you the briefest overview, Convergence is now part launchpad, part AMM. Now, I know that's probably going to be a bit of crypto jargon to many of you, so let me actually explain what that means. A launchpad is where projects can initially launch their token to the public. A launchpad often allows the community to purchase tokens for extremely cheap prices before they're actually listed on any sort of exchange. Now, this typically results in quick returns for anyone lucky enough to get in, and Convergence actually causes their 
offering product, which in their own words, brings fundraising and early subscription of exclusive opportunities in the form of private sale tokens before public access. Again, it's a launch pad. But my issue is launch pads aren't really new and nor are they equally as exciting as a market maker full of security tokens. There are a lot of other projects out there currently doing Launchpad-esque work, so I don't really see Convergence offering anything particularly different. Now, next is their AMM. Now, an automated market maker is a protocol that powers decentralized exchanges, allowing the swapping of assets via liquidity pools rather than an order book. Now, take Uniswap, PancakeSwap, SushiSwap, or even Sunday Swap, or any other sort of swap for that matter, as a perfect example of what Convergence calls ConvX and ConvPool. A common factor is that it isn't groundbreaking news. We have plenty of DEXs that offer this kind of service with a hell of a lot more liquidity. The only USP here is that ConvX and ConvPool are on Moonbeam and soon to be Moon River, allowing for a wide array of cross-chain possibilities. However, guys, there are so many logistical nightmares at even the thought of something like this actually coming up, such as fragmented liquidity and just finding liquidity in general. Now, at the present time, there is extremely low liquidity in all of the current pools. The smaller ones that Convergence had used for offerings like Lithium Finance and Only One are disabled, and Matic and Luna are, of course, due to see the same result. As for the pools with the highest amount of liquidity, the highest TVR I could find between the Ethereum and Moonbeam bridges was 843,000 between USDC and USDT on the Moonbeam bridge making the total TVL on Convergence $2.84 million, which is a super small, but in all credit, this is still higher than the market cap and is somewhat okay for an emerging AMM. Unfortunately though, Convergence is not an emerging AMM. You see, perhaps one of the most worrying things about everything is the investors. Remember guys, the investors were also sold on the idea of a security token superhighway, not just us. The main difference is that these guys hold hundreds of thousands of dollars of the token. And from what my research actually tells me, even these investors are down around 2x at the time of recording. So from my experience, this means that they will either sell when they can or hold to provide support for convergence to actually come back into relevance. Now, my intuition is telling me the former. See, as a venture capitalist, if your investment changes its USP completely, and in all fairness to Convergence, though it was an appropriate cause, then it becomes undesirable in most cases if it isn't merging into another really unique niche. So what I'm trying to say here, guys, is that I don't really doubt that the firms will dump their tokens when they can, and that's more or less linearly for the next two more years. Now, of course, I'm really, really sorry to break this bad news to a lot of you. It's just a fact, and it's a part of my due diligence as an honest creator. I don't really apologize for making that first video when I did because at the time it did show a lot of potential. However, of course, considering Convergence had to absolutely do what they did, it obviously resulted in leaving us high and dry. I see their move into an AMM for the projects they listed on Convo as a pretty cool idea and somewhat as close as they could get to the previous proposition. As we've seen though, the hype fizzled out quite quickly after the downward spiral of the market, which of course never helped their cause. So the most important part of this video what have I and hopefully all of us learnt together? So let me summarize. I believe Convergence is a project born in the bull, gone in the bear. Something we often see time and time again in crypto. Now I for one now understand how imperative it is to observe the current state of the markets in a both macro and micro sentiment and compare this with the project's technological proposition. If a project launches at all time market highs and proposes something that will revolutionize the space, let's face it, as almost all projects actually do, then perhaps waiting until the next bear market will be a better way of obviously entering the project based on how they perform over the bull and partway into the bear. Now, if a project retains a solid community and remains firm in building a product over the winter, then hell yeah, it's probably worth a chance. But one thing we need to remember is that good projects can fall quicker than they come into relevance as this entire ecosystem is built upon human emotions. FOMO is a one-way street to flushing capital down the drain and FUD is the killer of capital. But I guess this leads me to my next takeaway and that's basing buys and sells around market news because humans react, as I said, on FUD and FOMO. Now, what I don't actually mean is follow the herd and buy when there's good news and sell when there's bad. What I actually mean is finding what is currently happening in the macro world, not just in crypto, and base decisions from that. Now, for example, there was no warning that Convergence was specifically going to stop aiming at being a tokenized security superhighway. 
It was the SEC announcing the crackdown on crypto markets that changed everything. Now you need to be aware of this information just as much as direct news surrounding your projects. And I highly suggest reading or listening to a reliable crypto news source as a part of your daily morning routine. Now, I've actually been using a crypto news aggregator called Today on Chain alongside some other direct outlets, including Yahoo Finance, to source news each and every morning. Now, whether you read the articles or not, it's completely up to you, but at least look into the ones that have any kind of direct or indirect impact on your projects. Now, speaking of projects, keeping your circle small is really important here. You don't want to spread yourself thin with 15 or more projects you've invested in. Finding a small group of highly promising projects that you truly believe in. And I don't mean you've heard someone say they're great or the next 100x moonshot. I mean, understand the technicals yourself and only invest if you believe in it. You should be able to explain the details behind how each and every single one of your invested projects work to a crypto and non-crypto friend and everything that goes along with their roadmap. Now, this will mean constantly, of course, observing their Medium article and being present in the Telegram and Discord chats and even having those annoying Twitter notifications turned on. But remember, the road to success is not easy and if you want to prevent permanent loss, you must be on the ball. If you can't afford to always observe the projects you're invested in, then you've spread yourself too thin and saying that you cannot get emotionally connected to them either. Stay absolutely neutral and objective. The minute you're convincing yourself that it's still worth it, then you've obviously lost control of your own mind. The next lesson is no matter how good the project tells us it is, feasibility is crucial. Now, what I mean by that is understanding what can actually be done is really, really important. You wouldn't obviously believe me if I told you on a white paper that I could actually time travel or teleport because you somewhat have an understanding behind the levels of complexity that that would require. Now, the same goes for crypto. So tokenizing physical assets is obviously hard enough, but then using those assets in an AMM to efficiently and fluidly trade would be extremely difficult to do by even a larger and more notable project. Now, this obviously should have been a warning sign to begin with. Emotions took control and the feeling of a revolutionary new project sparked my interest like crazy. And I'm sure they did yours as well. We need to actually ask ourselves, guys, why haven't a larger or other projects done the same or similar thing? And in the case of convergence, it would be fairly easy to tell why. But you could probably also apply this to UST and Luna as well. Algorithmically backed stable coins have always been known to fail. So what makes them any so different? If they can answer that and you're confident in the rebuttal, then go for your life. You've done your due diligence. Unfortunately, with everything in consideration, I feel like the only thing worth coming from this investment is the lessons learned. In my opinion, this means that we may lose lots and lots of funds, including a substantial amount myself. I honestly just didn't anticipate this move, guys. Being so spread with capital and being so busy with other life situations, my focus was lapsed and I didn't have time to act when I should have. I honestly feel like Logan Paul right now. Look, I understand the news about convergence will impact you all very, very deeply if you at least have invested, but I'm here to say, do the research yourself. Don't just listen to what I'm saying right now. If you believe in the project, go ahead and DYOR. If you've learned anything from me over this time, it's DYOR. I really can't stress that enough. But if it helps in any way, I'm not selling my convergence position. As a matter of fact, my total loss right now is at around 95%, which means I'm more than comfortable waiting for the possibility that convergence will live long enough to either reconfigure where they want a niche or I ride it to zero. Or even, who knows, maybe we see a bounce in the markets. It's crypto, anything can happen. But I fully expect to lose my money here, and so should a lot of you. But before I leave, I want to reiterate, this isn't me hating on convergence. Let me make that very, very clear. This is just the facts. And I mean, I don't want to lose any of my money either. Let me tell you all about that. But it's better we learn from something than continually make the same mistakes. So with that being said, my next video is going to be on Veracity, so stay tuned for that. I know a lot of you guys are really, really interested in that project as well. All right, so guys, let me know what you think down below. I want to know all your opinions. We're all a part of the same community. We're all here to learn. Let's build and grow together. So with that being said, don't criticize anyone down below. Let's think out loud. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you on my next video.